everyone, and welcome to another edition of Paul's Cinema Picks of the Week. I am your host, Paul Westbrook, Brantford's film enthusiast. I love saying that. And today, we're going to be uh, talking about uh, werewolves. Well, not not your average, typical werewolf movie. But, uh, there was a Canadian series that came out, a series of films, three films, and I brought them here today. It's on the movie Ginger Snaps. Let's see if my sister gets uh, that. There. Oh yeah. Yeah, this was a uh, a horror film series from early 2000s, and uh, it starred Catherine Isabel and Emily Perkins as two sisters. Yeah, two very weird sisters, if you will. And these two weird sisters, well. They had this uh, dark, almost gothic type thing. But so it sort of mixes the goth um, thing, the goth trend with the uh, werewolf legend. Because one of the sisters, which is Ginger, she gets bit by a werewolf, and eventually she becomes a werewolf. So her sister has to deal with all that issue there and how to deal with um, Ginger's sudden uh, bloodthirsty hunger and. Uh, her fact that her sister's going around killing people. Now, the first Ginger Snaps here was actually made, believe it or not, in Canada. And Catherine Isabel herself, a great actress, by the way, she um, she does a lot of Canadian films. Um, she did a movie called American Mary, among other uh, films that she's done. And she's always, always somebody you like to see. And my friend Darren really has a thing for her in the film because he actually likes Catherine Isabel. They're both hot. And she is nice. What was that? They're both hot. Yes. Which one, Emily? Both of them. Emily Perkins and Catherine Isabel. And you got Mimi Rogers who plays the mom. And I'm not sure who Chris Lemke is, but, um... Yeah, Rex Reed actually says this movie is sick, twisted, and often hilarious. And, um... We watch to see why. It's one of the more fun horror films, so it doesn't drag. It has sort of a low budget. I figured when I first saw it, it seemed uh, kind of a low budget when it's not very high budget. But at the same time, the important aspect is that the movie entertains you and is well acted. you got a couple of hot-looking chicks in it. <laughs> there, I had to say that. Kind of a hot-looking chick yep. in it. And you get, for the horror affectionados, you get all the blood and guts and gore that you come to expect from these type of movies. So, I would say Ginger Snaps is a sure win. So, there. And then, um, after they did Ginger Snaps, they waited a while and they came out with uh, Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed. Yes. Which continues the story. Um, Bridget, who's played by Emily Perkins, more or less, um, I don't really want to give away the spoiler. Like I said, the, but it's Bridget. She's somehow infected with the same thing that uh, her sister was in the first uh, movie. So uh, now, now she's not living at her home. It says here she fled her home and is living like a junkie in a rundown motel, dependent upon injections of monk shod. Don't know what that is. A drug that postpones the mutating. Oh, okay, the drug that postpones the mutating effect of the virus but does not cure it. So, um, yeah, it's more or less Bridget. Uh, she's, she feels she's being stalked by a werewolf, a brand new one. But in a sense, you don't, what she doesn't realize is that eventually she's going to end up becoming the werewolf herself. Much like her sister Ginger in the first movie. This one was actually made at a higher budget, apparently, when I got it at the store. They said it was a higher budget. Yeah, they actually told me that. They told me that it was a higher budget. I looked at it. And yeah, this one was made in 2003. And like I said, the um, the werewolf in it is stalking Ginger. Well, not stalking Ginger, stalking uh, Bridget, who is Ginger's sister. And in this one here, it takes place in winter. And also, um, 
says, when people begin to die in the clinic, Bridget knows that the creature has found her again. But what, um, like I said, what's happened is that since, uh, since Bridget has the same curse, Eventually, uh, she's going to turn out to be the world. But yeah, this is a good one to actually watch with uh, the first one too, as um, you get more of the story. The story continues, so um, it leads into uh, the uh, Ginger Snaps Three, the beginning. Well, sort of, sort of leads into it, because in this one here. Uh, Bridget and Ginger says, Bridget and Ginger aren't in Bailey Downs anymore, which is the town where they live in, in the uh, story. The Fitzgerald sisters find themselves in a place more bleak and depressing than the suburbs. 19th century Canada. So in this one, we go back in time. Somehow the two sisters are in the 19th century. And it says here, on the run, Bridget and Ginger find refuge in a small trader's fort on the edge of the known new world. Sheltered by a ragtag group of near insane explorers and traders, the girl's sanctuary turns out to be a confine of terror when they discover the fort is under siege by savage werewolves. So the recurring theme in this movie here is the werewolves, from the first one, the second one, uh, to now. And like I said, this one here takes place in the 19th century, which I found a little odd. I thought originally the part three, they would have just continued from where they left off in part two, but... I guess they decided just to go with something new, a concept that's new and different, which has been used before. Like, sometimes they'll have the later chapters, and they'll go back in time, and then they'll find the genesis and the origin and the beginnings of what leads into, in this case, the uh, werewolf curse. And I found this one to be good as well. And uh, I like the fact of the 19th century, so I really like that, that part of it because um, it was different than the other two. But at the same time, yes, the, for continuity um, thing, you always want it to go into, uh, like, say, what would happen. Like, maybe Bridget got older, maybe she got married, or maybe Ginger somehow came back from the grave, whatever, whatever the case. Uh, at the same time, it was, it's still a great and final companion piece to the other two Ginger Snaps. So when I uh, went to the store... And I picked this one to pick up part two. I found part three, so I picked it up at the same time. So, uh, yeah, you've seen those movies, haven't you, Seth? Yeah, I used to own them. Yeah, Ginger, what was your thoughts on Ginger Snaps? Loved them. Any, I don't think I've seen two, though. Any part of it that you liked particularly, or just like the well, acting, the girls? In the first movie, given that the high school students. Right. The odd ones out, being goths and all that stuff. That would be Bridget. They're both kind of goths. But how she ends up turning out as her DNA changes. Yeah. Let's call it. Well, you're talking about the first movie, right? Yeah. The first movie, yeah. While she's, swing, while she's changing, <clears throat> her DNA changing, she's starting to act more... Savage. Savage, but more... Sexuality, I guess, and experimenting with stuff. Everything uh, multiplies and increases as she's going along. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I felt when I I saw the um, three movies there, too. I thought it was um, interesting how the gradual changes happened. It didn't just happen right away. It happened as uh, the movie goes along, how the changes begin, from uh, Ginger's first being bit in the attack by the werewolf to Ginger herself starting to become the werewolf. And then um, later in the second movie, Bridget has to deal with more of the same things that Ginger does. So it's interesting in a sense for part three how they come together, even though, well, again, like I said, I can't give a spoiler away. So there's just something in it that I kind of looked and I said it didn't make really a lot of sense because of the fact that... um, of the of certain events that happened in the first movie. But at the same time, I thought that, yeah, this is a good trilogy of films. I think there was supposed to be a TV series on it, or there was. I'm not sure. Not that if anybody, I know If anybody out there knows about it, um, please let me know. But, no, I don't um, 
didn't see any um, any uh, particular TV series on it. So it would have probably made a good series at the same time. But for now, that's uh, that's uh, the movie Ginger Snaps 1, 2, and 3. And I hope you uh, can look for them in the store. They're very hard to find, so you might have to go to a specialty store to find them. But oh, maybe possibly Amazon. Or Amazon, yes. We always say I always Amazon. say Amazon. Try Amazon. You could probably find uh, the DVDs or Blu-rays there. Not so much the VHS is the same as you would. That's how I got it. How I got them, but get them on the DVD and Blu-ray format or 4K or whatever you format you actually uh, have accessible to uh, whatever movie need you have. But for now, this is Paul Westbrook reminding you to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment, please. Leave some comments in the uh, comment section, which is below the video you're seeing right here. There's a comment section right down there. I'm pointing at it. So uh, that way you'll be able to uh, find that. And then leave some comments, because I like to read the comments too during the week. And uh, I guess that's it for now. And this is Paul Westbrook, Brantford's film enthusiast, saying that I'll be seeing you at the movies. Bye.